Hi, if you are a discouraged pastor, discouraged believer, or somebody who spent years believing the word of God and uh, is in depression now from seeing really little around you, I want to say you are not alone. I'm not saying that uh, anyhow dismiss the struggle. Just to say that I understand, partially, because I go through it at times. There is one story I heard uh, like years ago. I think it was Reinhard Bonke who spoke about how after every time when they had great exploits, you know, when many people came to Christ when there was manifestations of God's power and uh, when things happened, you know, the day after that there was serious attack on soul, uh, depressions and basically depletion <laughs> and they had to fight against this, you know. On that note, we also had great Sunday just now, you know, and uh, there was some spiritual breakthroughs. Quite often I had this type of depletion on Monday already, but this time I I somehow made it to Tuesday. <laughs> uh, guys, today is my birthday. It is big jubilee, but I'm not celebrating it. Uh, it's my second big jubilee that I am not celebrating because when I ponder on my life, it feels like if nothing is happening, like if everything that has been promised by God or that has been prophesied to me uh, is still nowhere to be seen. <laughs> so if you are there, my dear atheist friend, somebody who been discouraged before and left church, um, left the word of God, you can write something, you, know? <laughs> you can laugh at me. You can say that you are wasting your time. I don't know what you can say, what I didn't say to myself already, you know. Uh, but I know that in that place of depression, there is nowhere to go. Even if I find any, any way how to just encourage myself to do something, I know that my very being and desire to do certain things in life are closely connected with kingdom of God. If there is not kingdom of God, then I don't have so much faith in humanity that I would be willing and able to do something which demands so much sacrifice and uh, stamping on your own soul, feeling and, and uh, desires. There was one prophecy that, that man of God spoke to me in church, uh, it was over 10 years ago. And this prophet did not come often, but uh, he was there before. In the same church, he was there like years before, before this time. And I was not in the church, but my wife was, and she said like, yeah, this man told me everything what nobody knew about me. <laughs> and he, I said, and my wife was saying like, I said, um, like, ah, okay, you are a man of God. If you are a man of God, you will call me uh, to come. And before she even finished the talk, the man pointed the finger on her <laughs> and said, you, you, come. Uh, so <laughs> she went and she was repenting <laughs> and walking towards, like, God, don't expose me. And um, so he taught her things from her life. And now she said, like, yeah, this man is certified. So I remember that when, when I saw him. It was in time when I barely understood English and uh, many times the visitor speakers, uh, they was making noise and people was clapping. I didn't know what they said. <laughs> but uh, so often I, I was not sure if I should be intimidated or impressed. Sometimes it was like I was trying to read body language and I was not sure exactly. It was like mixed messages 
sometime, but this man, hmm, there was something because of what Arita said, but also because of what I could perceive. Uh, I had some type of trust towards him and uh, he actually did call me too, even though I didn't challenge God, like, call me. I didn't say like uh, nothing for him to prove his authenticity with God. I was just there kind of like waiting like Lord if you got something for me I, I will be happy to hear from authentic people you know which uh, I feel a higher level of trust to, towards. So he did call me and he started to prophesy and uh, he said things um, about certain stuff that I had on my heart and I already gave up on it. It was like I already saw that this is not going to be probably happening. And he said like, no, uh, this is you. You have these gifts from God and uh, it's uh, even much better than what you think. Uh, he said basically the descriptions which exceeded the level that at that time other people would ascribe to me or that I could um, honestly believe about myself uh, after all humiliations that I went through. And uh, so there was that encouragement and he said like, you will not wait any longer, like it will not be postponed anymore. But I didn't know what to do with that prophecy. That time I didn't know uh, how much I need to cling on it or if I need to repeat it or if I just believe like, Lord, you say this, so it will happen. <laughs> so 10 years later, it did not manifest. <laughs> and I said so many times like, Lord, I don't understand your word. Like you say one thing and you say the other thing. I don't understand. Like it's frustrating, my atheist friends. Kudos to you, you gave up on it and you said that it is rubbish. But I know there is uh, life in this word of God, you know. But it is many times frustrating when you don't know how to choose blessing and not the curse. <laughs> Lord said, choose the blessing because I put before you blessing and the curse. <laughs> and he said, I urge you, choose the blessings. And so many times I opened my mouth and I spoke like Israelites in deserts. And I, I'm telling you, like, uh, recently I felt like banning my head into walls. I did feel like I'm losing my mind. I was like, Lord, uh, this cannot be you. Uh, like, what am I just missing? Is it? I was watching all kind of uh, self-help videos uh, about how to um, progress in stuff uh, was trying to reconcile that with the word of God and so far I did not how green light to do nothing but to just go faithfully to work and look that garden yeah <laughs> even that doesn't look great you know um, but huh, I know that only way is forward and there is one more scripture that has been given to me as a scripture for me and this was my wife who hmm, prayed and he uh, basically uh, she said this uh, I see you in this psalm it is psalm 112 hmm. And I want to read that psalm to encourage myself and to encourage you if you are in similar place where God promised things, you done all you can do right, you sometimes slide and you don't know how much can you blame yourself from failing repeatedly or for not breaking through ever. <laughs> uh, there is the word of God. And in the word of God is curses and there is blessing, there is life. 
I will read that Psalm 119, I mean 112, and I, I will read it like I mean it for myself. I, I will receive this psalm as I'm reading it, and I offer to you, if this is also needed for you, receive it also. Hmm. Let us encourage ourselves in the Lord. David was also in the situation where sometimes he felt like his life doesn't make sense. Sometimes it was his people felt like this guy lost it. And they, they wanted to kill him. <laughs> That's when he encouraged himself in the Lord. And sometimes you might wonder, like, how did he encourage? Uh, I tell you, go and read Psalms and you will see a uh, number of them are basically him talking and that's how he encouraged himself from describing the horrible situation but then calling upon the Lord and I felt the difference when that depression hits you and you feel like man like uh, I don't even know what I should do like I feel this uh, powerless anger just want to destroy something because I don't know uh, how to start to build something <laughs> and I see that there is something so beautiful and powerful that I am here to build and to help uh, this group of people to build something for to helping uh, many people <laughs> but I don't have ability to even help myself at this point uh, it's like uh, man who is gonna help me <laughs> who's gonna help me I feel like that yeah like uh, I give my tithes, I give my time, I uh, sacrifice um, my energy and no, it's like it's still just through faith. I don't see any encouragement. So let me encourage myself and let me encourage you if you will receive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Lord, I delight greatly in your commandments. I fear the Lord. I am blessed man. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Ha! Ah, wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Hmm. My descendants will be mighty on earth. The generations of upright, my generations, will be blessed. Hmm. Ha! Ah, my descendants will be mighty on earth. <laughs> my generation will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in my house and my righteousness endures forever. Hey, unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart, his heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid hmm, until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Hmm. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. Hmm. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Jan is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A young deal graciously and lends. He guides his affairs with discretion. Surely young will never be shaken. 
the righteous Jan will be in everlasting remembrance. Hmm. Jan's descendants will be mighty on earth. Hmm. The generations of Jan will be blessed. Put your name in there. Blessed is, the, blessed is Jan who fears the Lord, who de delights greatly in Lord's commandments. Jan's descendants will be mighty on earth. The generations of Jan will be blessed. World and riches will be in Jan's house. And Jan's righteousness endures forever. Ha, unto Jan, the upright, there arises light in the darkness. Jan is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Hmm. A good man, Jan, deals graciously and lends. Jan will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely, Jan will never be shaken. The righteous, Jan will be in everlasting remembrance. Hmm. Jan shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Jan's heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Jan's heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Jan has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Jan's horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. Hmm. Ah, his enemies will gnash their teeth and they will melt away. Hmm. The desire of the wicked shall perish. But Jan and you, my friend, we shall be blessed. We shall overcome. The word of God will be fulfilled in our lives. Hmm. And the vision, we will write it down so everyone can run through it. And it will bring wealth and healing to the nations in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen.